Greetings. Last week, the United States government uh, detained a woman uh, who works for Press TV out of Iran. Uh, she is an American-born uh, woman who's been in Iran for decades. Uh, her name is Marsaria Hashemi. Uh, she, again, was born in the United States, uh, comes back to the United States roughly annually uh, to visit family. Uh, she was on one of those trips. She has done some documentaries uh, in the U.S., uh, specifically on the Black Lives Matter issue, considering that she is a black woman. Uh, but she was detained as a material witness for an unspecified crime. Uh, and the U.S. government didn't admit uh, for almost a week that they had her in custody. Uh, they have now placed her family under a gag order. order. Uh, so what is actually happening is remains in question. So what is being, being proclaimed in the news media obviously is only from one side. Uh, because the other side, the U.S. government, has said very little. Friday, they did apparently admit that they do have her in customer and she, custody, and she appeared in court, in a closed court. So uh, what actually happened is not being uh, uh, allowed to be seen by the public. Uh, so the open society that we live in is not very open in the United States. Uh, she has been apparently refused as a Muslim woman, halal food, which for someone who practices uh, Islam is an offense. Uh, she was offered pork, which is an offense. They removed her hijab, which to a Muslim woman is an offense. This seems like a very cruel uh, thing for, for somebody to do. But again, what has been uh, proclaimed has only been from one side. So what has actually happened still, there's a little bit of mystery here, uh, but it should be noted that this, this is not unique. Uh, the U.S. has detained uh, Iranian citizens and uh, Muslims uh, in uh, undisclosed uh, situations repeatedly, uh, some of them for months, uh, and uh, very little attention is given to them. But the difference here is uh, Hashemi is a very well-known uh, reporter and presenter uh, for Press TV in Iran. Uh, you can find that uh, what will be said is Press TV is the Iranian state uh, news agency, just as RT, Russia Today, is the uh, Russian state news agency. And so these things are looked in a kind of condemning manner. However, the BBC is the British state news media. And in reality, uh, in the U.S., our corporate entities and the government, they're joined at the hip. So even though we have, you know, it used to be ABC, NBC, CBS, now it's more MSNBC and Fox News, uh, these kind of things change. But it really is that corporate entity that is speaking in lockstep with the government. And of course, there is the question, is the corporation controlling the government or the government controlling the corporation? It's an interesting discussion in its own. But in the case of Hashemi, uh, let's examine a few things from the perspective of a follower of Christ. I am not a Muslim. I believe Islam is wrong. But as a follower of Christ, my contention is we are called to love the Muslim and contend with Islam rationally, lovingly. So when you offer pork to a Muslim woman, this is, a very, this is offensive. This should not be done. This is cruel. Consider what would happen if you had a vegan and you offered them pork. Can you imagine the, the uh, response you'd get? Do you think PETA uh, would, would, would respond kindly, gently, or uh, would they make a little bit of noise? Uh, consider also uh, the Chinese Communist Party, Party. in Northwest China. Uh, you have the Uyghur Muslims, uh, a large community, uh, and uh, the Chinese Communist Party re-educates them. They force them to eat pork and drink alcohol. They force them into doing things that the Muslim would find offensive. 
this is wrong. What's the difference in the U.S.? It appears very little. Now, from the perspective of a Christian, the, as a follower of Christ, the scripture gives me clarity in the sense that I can. I have the freedom to eat pork. I also have the freedom to abstain from pork. I have that freedom. But I do not have the freedom or the right to impose that on somebody else, whether they're Christian or non-Christian. To do that is unloving. It's inappropriate for a follower of Christ. Apparently also, she was forced to remove her hijab. Now, consider if you are an American citizen, you're traveling in a foreign country, and their culture is a little different, and you are detained for some reason. And, you know, if you're a woman, they force you to walk around topless. Would you be offended? If you're a man, forced to be walk around naked, would you be offended? That analogy and asking a Muslim woman, a, a, a woman who is dedicated to her faith, to remove her hijab is a similar offense. And one of the things I think we got to point out is that a hijab and a burqa are two different things. I think in the United States, we conflate the two as one. The burqa is the thing that, 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 that covers the entire face. This is more common in Saudi Arabia than in Iran. And it's interesting, isn't it? Saudi Arabia is the very strong U.S. ally, whereas the freedom to wear just a hijab or nothing is available in Iran, not in Saudi Arabia. Who's our allies? You know, it, it's also interesting uh, that uh, the, uh, and of course, remember, the burqa is a requirement uh, for most women. Uh, in Saudi Arabia. Uh, the uh, head coverings are also discussed in 1 Corinthians 11. And it is a bit of an issue, not a strong issue, but it is a, a bit of an issue in some parts of the Christian community. And you will see that there are a lot of times where in some circumstances or in most circumstances, a lot of women will have some form of head covering. Uh, there is no condemnation uh, that, that, that should be given to those who do or don't. Uh, this is the freedom we have in food, I think is the same freedom we have when it comes to head coverings. Do what is you, you feel called to do, the Romans 14 uh, example. Uh, but violating what, you're, what you feel is appropriate uh, is inappropriate. So we should also give that same grace to someone who follows Islam, a Muslim woman wearing a hijab or even a burqa. Uh, but uh, go one step further. Remember too that uh, when you look at when we when the United States look at the Islamic community, we, for the most part, have very little knowledge of them, and we know that there's a tension there. Uh, there's the uh, Sunni Shia tension. But, you know, it's interesting. It's just like the tension between the Roman Catholicism and Christianity, which gets stronger and weaker as the decades passed. Uh, but in the same way, there's, a, there's that same tension within Islam. And uh, from what I hear, uh, as someone who studies but is, does not live in that environment, uh, the Shia Muslims, the ones that are in Iraq and Iran, uh, are, are considered by some, or even most, not real Muslims, uh, because there, there, there's, a, there's a difference in theology. Uh, and they are not as strong in some areas. And of course, you know, the other extreme would be Wahhabism, which is Saudi Arabia, which is the more aggressive. You know, if you want to find where the beheadings occur for somebody who uh, renounces Islam and, and converts to Christianity, it's not Iraq, it's not Iran. It's not Syria, it's Saudi Arabia, the U.S. ally. We have a strange set of friends, don't we? Okay, go one, one step further. Uh, Hashmi is a black woman. I've studied this issue a lot, participated in this issue a good bit. As you can see, I am a white male. And I can tell you the difference between a black man and a white man. It's skin color. 
It's like the difference between a tall man and a short man. It's height. The idea that there's a value difference, that there's a qualitative difference, is absolutely bogus. White man, black man. Tall man, short man. Thin man, fat man. They're all created in the image of God. They all have value because they're created in the image of God. Uh, you can find that racism does indeed exist. Uh, in the United States, we have the white racists noted by, for example, the KKK. But it's not a white-only thing. We have the black racists, too, noted by, for example, the black Hebrew Israelites. Uh, the tension is there. We can look at the scripture and read about this. It is discussed. You will see nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Kingdom is the idea of the political country. Uh, the, uh, the United States versus Iran, for example. You will see that they will rise up against each other. But nation against nation, the word nation is ethnos. It is where we get our ethnicity, which includes skin color, language, and, and, and various cultural differences. The Bible tells us that they will rise up against each other. It is telling what will happen. It is not commanding what should be. It's not a command. It is telling us what will happen. So when we observe, if you're a follower of Christ, and when we observe that countries rise up against each other, or people of different ethnicities rise up against each other, our call is to not participate in that, and where possible, mediate that, because it's wrong. It does not belong. We are not called to say, because you are that way, because you have that characteristic, somehow you're lesser than I. No, I'm sorry. There's no call for that. It's interesting to note to me, uh, I, I find it fascinating that you will find that, uh, especially in the Iranian press TV's uh, coverage of it, she's often described as a 59-year-old grandmother. It gives you the idea of a soft, frail lady. The reality is, she is a very articulate spokeswoman. If you watch her on her on the news media, she does frequently a program called The Debate uh, and uh, moderates that between uh, opposing sides. This woman's skilled. This is not some weak, frail woman. This is a woman who can take somebody and rip them apart verbally, not condemningly, but, but with the truth. She handles the truth well. She calls people out when they offer untruths. But there's a fundamental. As a follower of Christ, I believe she handles truth very well, except the fundamental of Islam versus Christianity. Now note well, she was raised as a, in a Christian home in the United States. And apparently, one of the things that uh, questioned her, questioned uh, Christianity in her mind was the, the description of the Trinity. And she saw in Islam a better answer. I would suggest the problem is not there with Islam. It's with, with the Christian community who is not ready to give an answer for the hope that is within us. Because when somebody asks about the, the Trinity, we, we, we should be able to understand that the Quran says, do not say three, speaking specifically of the Trinity. It talks about the Trinity as Father, Mary, and Jesus. A, the Christian community should be able to say, oh, please, allow me to explain. It's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Not Gabriel, the Holy Spirit. Three persons uh, that describe the Godhead. We are not polytheists. We are monotheists as the Christian community. But we need to be able to explain this, to articulate this well. And when we look at that 1 Peter 3.15, in our heart, we're supposed to honor Christ the Lord as holy. Christ the Lord. Christ as Yahweh. So this is not Christ as a created being, where uh, uh, Islam, where the Quran says, be, and it is. Or, 
and where Allah says that. Uh, but Christ, Jesus Christ, from the Christian's perspective, is not a created being, but the creator. So the creator who entered his creation. But we are supposed to negotiate this, debate this, examine this with gentleness and respect or fear or reverence. It's interesting. The word fear in that verse is where we get the basis of the English word phobia, as in Islamophobia. But in that verse, the phobia is not of Islam, but the fear of the Lord. So somebody who says, oh, I'm scared of the Muslim community. No, I'm sorry. I fear the Lord. His command to me is not to fear the Muslim, but to love them. It's interesting also to note that the, uh, the, the, her co-workers at Press TV produced a short video. A lot of times when something, an event like this will occur, you'll see the, the, oh, those foul people, they're doing some terrible things for you. I mean, this is, this is fairly common. It happens in foreign countries. It happens in the United States. What they did was more of a welcome back. We're praying for you. I would suggest they're praying to Allah instead of the Lord. But that, again, what they showed is love towards a co-worker. They showed a welcoming back. Uh, they showed a great model of what it is they weren't condemning. They were inviting her home. This, I would suggest, was a great model. It's also important uh, when we look at the uh, various communities around the world, the th three common ones are obviously Islam, Christianity, and atheism. And there is a common fear in the U.S. especially, or in the West, in Europe, uh, of Islam. Whereas there's a something we have an advantage, Christianity and Islam, we have a foundation. Atheism has no foundation. You can argue various things from a pseudo-scientific, but usually they, find, they argue from scientists, not science, or a greater good mentality. The problem is those mentalities lead to eugenics and genocide. Many studies have been shown it's not religious wars that kill the masses. It's the atheists. They're the greater fear. So when you look at Islam versus Christianity, we have a foundation. We have Allah or the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is, I mean, which one is true? The fundamental question is, which one is true? They conflict. They are not both true. One of us, at least one of us, is wrong. So the question is, which one is true? Now, how do you determine this truth? Do you determine this truth by saying, I have more hellfire missiles than you do, I have more drones than you do, and I have aircraft carrier, more aircraft carriers, and I have more weapons than you do, therefore I'm right? I have a bigger bank account than you do, therefore I'm right? Or I have reason. I have evidence. I have love. I would suggest the appropriate response to this question is to love the Muslim and contend with Islam. Show the respect to the Muslim that they are human beings created in the image of God and rationally interact with them, saying, I suggest that you have a misunderstanding of the Trinity, that you have a misunderstanding of who Jesus Christ is, it's not Allah saying be and he is, but the Lord Jesus Christ saying, I'm stepping into my creation. A rational discussion of this is what people who have a mind to think should do. People who have a heart to love should do. Uh, so uh, when you look at the example of what's happening, one of the problems is uh, we're getting some information out from the Iranian state television, but not from the U.S., and it's happening here in the U.S. Uh, we are living in a country where we have uh, 
a closed court system. Uh, because when, when particular things happens, we have the FISA court and we have other things, such as this idea of uh, a uh, uh, material witness. Uh, you can be arrested and that's it. You're, you, you have no rights. We're not in a free country. This is very, very unfortunate. Uh, and of course, you know, the idea of, well, she works for state television. Remember, uh, remember the Mockingbird, they call it the Mockingbird's Press because of Operation Mockingbird uh, from, from years past where the government had significant influence in the corporate media. And remember the, the uh, last signing of the NDAA from uh, President Obama uh, was to, uh, in the reauthorization, included things like uh, uh, propaganda uh, for the U.S. The Ministry of Propaganda is not something just uh, during, um, uh, you know, the, the Nazi era. It's the U.S. today. But for the follower of Christ, we have various commands, the obvious being Leviticus 19.18, to love our neighbor. And, you know, the, the obvious question is, who is our neighbor? Jesus answered that question. The story of the Good Samaritan. So we see that example. Remember the Samaritan. Oh, those people, they're different. They don't believe the same thing we do. And his call was to love them. And his conclusion was, go and do likewise. With that, viewers, it brings us to the end of uh, this debate. I'm Marzia Hashimi. Thanks so much for being with us.